Hello everyone and welcome to the 28th Coco programming tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how we can work with keyboard events in Coco. So all this code that you see in front of you here is from the previous tutorial, lesson 27. And in that tutorial we worked with mouse events where we could uh, register for mouse down, mouse dragged, and I showed you a bunch of other ones that you could register for as well. But the important part from that was really how you could convert the points in order for us to draw the rectangle in our little drawing application. So if we go ahead and run this, this is what we made in the previous tutorial. Basically, you know, we can draw out this rectangle like that, and we can expand our view as well. So that's what we did in the last tutorial. So what we want to do in this tutorial is enable keyboard events. And what we're going to do is map basically some keys that we can use to swap between using a rectangle that we're drawing or an oval. So that's really all we're adding to this. We're going to add a simple way that you can register for characters on your keyboard and you can swap between a rectangle and an oval. Okay, so that's, we'll keep it simple. So with that, um, basically if we want to hold that either an oval or a rectangle status, we're going to just hold that in a bool. Because since we're only drawing two things, we can say it's either an oval or not. So we're going to hold this value as a bool in our instance variables here. And we're just going to create a bool and we'll call it is oval. So, you know, if is oval is yes, it's an oval that we're drawing. And if no, we're going to draw a rectangle. So, uh, for that now, we can also set up a default value for this if we want in our init. So we can say is oval gets yes. And I just want to show you that so that you know if you want to set up specific things, you can use your init method as well. Don't forget about that. So, uh, with that, when you're working with mouse or sorry keyboard events, uh, any view has to basically be able to accept keyboard events by saying it accepts first responder status. Now this might sound really weird, but basically imagine app an application where you had a view and a text field, and text fields of course always accept character or keyboard events. And so basically, if you clicked your text field and you started you know typing something or whatever. And then you try to go back to your view that you're working in to draw or whatever, uh, and you wanted to use keyboard events. Um, basically, you couldn't use keys with that view. The view just wouldn't accept key. It just wouldn't accept uh, first responder status, which means it doesn't accept keyboard events. And we'll talk more about how we can work with first responder and stuff like that in a, few, in a later tutorial. But for now, you can just think of uh, accepting a first responder, or if you accept first responder status, that basically means that you can accept keyboard events. So for now, you can just think of it as that. And this is from the NS Responder class, which is a super class of NS View. So just so you know where this method's coming from. So the method that we're going to implement here is bool accepts first responder. And by default, this returns no. So, uh, you know, if it returns no, you're not going to become a first responder. And if you turn yes, which we want to do, of course, then you can obviously accept first responder status, which is what we want to accept keyboard events. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, the last thing that we have to do, of course, well, not the last thing, but we have to have a way of registering for when we click the keys. So this method is simply key down or key up. So we can say key down, and you'll notice that this passes in an NS event object. How convenient. And we want to register for what key is pressed. So in this method, we can just say, well, if, and we want to analyze the event that happens. And we can ask the event, well, what characters were pressed when, you know, they were pressed. And basically, you know, you, if you click a key, then that key letter or whatever you click is going to be what the character was clicked. So, of course, if I say the event, I can ask the event for its characters. And that would return an NS string of the character that is mapped to whatever key I click. So, basically, if I click the O key, then the thing would return an NS string of the value O. And of course, I can compare this by saying, is it equal to string? And I can say, well, if it is, equal to O, then I'll do whatever I want. So of course, I'm just asking the event for whatever character is clicked, and I'm comparing it to an, the letter O. And that if it's the letter O, then I'll say is oval gets not is oval. And that will simply swap between 
is oval is yes and is oval is no. So if it's yes, it becomes no, and if it's no, it becomes yes. And that will swap, of course, between our rectangle and the oval that we're going to draw in our draw rect. So now that we have that, we can simply go back to our draw rect here, and now we can implement this change. So all we have to do is say uh, that we're going to um, either draw an oval or we're going to draw a rectangle. So we're just going to say if is oval, and if is oval, we're just going to draw a an oval. So we can create an NS Bezier path, and NS Bezier path works with ovals as well. We'll create a Bezier path with an oval in rect. And that just means that you're going to draw an oval in the particular rectangle that you draw out which we already have implemented with our mouse methods. So we can just simply copy this from our previous tutorial with the rectangle that we make to make the rectangle. So we'll just copy that rectangle over, and now we're making a rect an oval that is in the rectangle. All right. And of course, to finish this off, we have to say that we're going to fill this oval as well. So now that we have that, we can also say, well, if that doesn't happen, then else we're going to make a rectangle. So very simple, just to run this through one more time of what we have. We have to say to our view that you're going to have to accept first responder status, and that just allows us to accept keyboard events, uh, and particularly when you come back to a view, it wouldn't accept it. But um, anyway, that doesn't really matter. Accept first responder just means you can accept keyboard events. So now, of course, uh, if we can accept key events, then we can register for the key down method. And for the key down method here, we want to just say, well, we want to check what characters we clicked, specifically the key that we clicked, which is going to be the letter O on our keyboard. And if it's equal to O, we'll swap between an oval and a rectangle. And then when we go to draw this, we're simply going to say, well, is oval will be an oval. And if it's not, then we'll draw a rectangle. So we can go ahead and test this out if we want. Go ahead and build and run this here. And you can see that when we start out, we draw an oval. And you can see that it's between the rectangle that I'm basically drawing out. That's how the oval works. And if I hit the O button on my keyboard, then I swap between that and the rectangle. So I could hit the O and I swap back. And if I even hold it, I can go crazy and swap back as I drag around like this. And yeah, so that's basically what happens. Now, you'll also notice that, of course, uh, you know, this doesn't actually uh, happen right away. If I click this and I click the letter, it's not actually switching between. It doesn't happen until I drag around that it actually registers for this. So the reason, of course, is that if I wanted to redraw this every time the character is clicked, I'd have to tell my view that it has to redraw itself. So if, for example, every time I hit a character on my keyboard, then I could have the view be redrawn. So I'll just say self set needs display, and I'll set it to yes. All right, so now if I go ahead and run this again, you'll see, well, you won't really see from what I'm doing, but if you test it at home, you'll see that if you hold your character button now, It'll continuously swap between being an oval and a rectangle every time you hold down the O key. So that's basically what will happen. And um, yeah, so there's not really much more to that. Uh, that's how you register for characters on your keyboard and how you can, you know, draw both a rectangle and an oval in your application. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I might even have another tutorial on uh, this kind of stuff. And, um, you know, you might see another one of these, but if you don't, you know, you can play around with this. And again, you can get more information from these events as well to check for specific things from uh, what you click. But anyway, you can look all that on your own. But that's uh, the gist of what you have to do to register your view to accept keyboard events. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next tutorial.